natural skin. And so we do have a couple of housekeeping items here. So if we go to the next slide, please. So the webinar is being recorded. It will be made available in approximately 30 days. Of course, we post on YouTube. It's also on the connexus.org website link. If you would like a copy of the slide deck, please complete the very short survey, which is at the end of the presentation. It's usually only two, three, four questions at the very, very most. And so for participants, please ask the questions via the webinar interface in the questions section. And then please know specific vendor questions. If you do have any any questions after the, uh, the webinar, please email connexus at info at connexus.org. Today, our Connexus host is Ms. Allie Russell, and we want to wish her all the luck. She's taking your LSATs on Saturday. And my name is Cara Gunderson. I'm the moderator. I'm the chairman of the Data Security Committee at Connexus, and my day job, I'm the point of sale manager at Sico Petroleum. And today we're very lucky to have with us Jeff Gibson, who's the Director of Product Strategy at ControlScan. A lot of folks also uh, know Jeff. Uh, ControlScan used to be Equisat, so, um, so Jeff has been there for, for quite some time and is, an, is uh, a network engineer and architect as well. So Jeff, thank you very much for, for being here today and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you. So a little bit about Connexus. Connexus is an independent and it's a member-driven nonprofit technology organization. And uh, they set standards such as data exchange security. A lot of folks in the industry are, uh, are very familiar with the new mobile uh, standard that Connexus came up with. And uh, they provide the vision for emerging technologies and, tr and trends. They're certainly an advocate for the industry and technology is their policy. So a lot of folks at Connexus, such as myself, are volunteers, and Jeff is a volunteer as well. Jeff is also a member of the uh, Data Security Committee, as well as the uh, subject matter experts for data security and PCI. Connexus, as I mentioned, has a, has a monthly webinar schedule, and uh, we um, have one coming up in November, and December as well, that we'll be advertising and, and all the way scheduled through May of next year. So if you have any webinar ideas, and that's actually one of the survey questions at the end, please let us know what you'd like to see for future webinars. So with that, um, we wanna invite everybody to the Tech Edge, which is a partnership between Connexus and NACS. So a lot of folks that have been in the petroleum business remember the old Nax Tech. Well, Nax Tech has been folded into the Nax Convention and Expo and uh, as part of as the creation of Tech Edge. So Connexus will be at booth 4384 at the Nax Show, which is next week. So we hope to see many of you there. Now I'd like to introduce Jeff Gibson, who is with ControlScan, who's going to share his knowledge about the Internet of Things. So Jeff, welcome, and thank you again for, for all of your knowledge sharing today. Oh, thank you, Cara. Thank you for everybody attending today. Um, Internet of Things, you know, we hear about it all the time. You know, it's a network of physical objects, devices, enabled embedded sensors that enable these objects to collect and exchange data over the Internet. Now, more and more devices today are popping up. You have TVs, you have your, um, sorry, TVs and phones connected, um, devices, your car, all this stuff, all this data, you know, went from just being isolated, the car just drove around and data was not available to now everything is reporting back. You know, how can you harness all this? How does it come all together for your retail environment? You know, some statistics from Gardner, you know, talk about, you know, the growth, you know, forecast 8.4 billion connected devices in 2017. You know, it constantly grows every year, more endpoints, you know, spending is continuing to grow, you know, but what's important to note is, you know, right now it's the consumer market segment, you know, it's 63% of the overall devices fall into consumer, this is your TVs and um, your cars, but that's growing. You know, there's a change in the market. 
you know, for the business, you know, from, you know, LED system, HVAC, you know, physical security cameras, these are all going to grow throughout the years, you know, and that's going to be more impact on the business and impact also value add, you know, but potentially the impact is also IOT services are central to the rise in IOT devices. What's important to note is IOT services. What is that? These are professional consulting services that provide technical expertise on the design and development of the solutions. You know, given the expanding uses and demands of IOT, it can be difficult for a small company to implement. You know, you you have all these different variables, different teams coming to you. Oh, I want to add this. I want to add that. But where do you bring it all together? How do you monitor? How do you deploy it? Can you do it internal? Can you do it external? You know, these are all things to consider when you're looking at IoT strategies. You know, where does it fall into the business? You know, we see it all the time in our consumer lives. You know, your TVs and such are a bit more and more enabled. You got your printers notifying you, you know, that your ink is low. It's all analytical data. You know, but but if you look in the retail segment, you know, I think the most obvious one is from the marketing perspective, you know, the customer experience. You know, I'm a visitor to a local C store. I buy my Diet Coke every morning. I get notified, you know, that I didn't show up and use my, my rewards, you know, because I have I've been traveling for a week. You know, with the use of Wi Fi and Bluetooth and in conjunction with using your apps on your phones, the marketing team has the ability to, you know, provide better customer experience overall. You know, if it's engagement, you know, I go in every day and get my Diet Coke. You know, what if they want to add something to that? You know, get a bag of chips. You've been here five days in a row. Boom, they know. They know I buy a Diet Coke every morning out of the fountain. Maybe there's a, a bottle you know, two for one, you know, that I can save money. All this data is, is, you know, is ability to better the customer experience. Loyalty programs all goes back to engagement, you know, buying habits. What am I buying? You know, give me a free this and give me a free that to, you know, every day I come in and get my Diet Coke, you know, what about an automatic checkout? He just a frequent visitor. He comes in. Maybe, you know, this is his buying habits. We know Jeff buys a Diet Coke five days out of the week. That's my coffee, by the way. You know, maybe there's a way that we can opt him into a new program that allows Jeff to scan his phone, get the Diet Coke, you know, on some self-service checkout. You know, it's, you know, these are all value adds. You know, with the use of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and I'll talk about a little bit more, you know, we can sense, you know, there, there's capabilities in there and that technology to sense where you are in the store. Where am I flowing? How is the customer flowing throughout the store? What are the backups? You know, do we, we need to redesign the layout of the store to better the experience for us, the merchant at the end of the day, you know, fueling options out at the pump. How can you leverage that, you know, through technology of, monitoring traffic coming in leaving you know what is the flow you know from an operations perspective you got marketing over there has a million ideas how they can better engage the end customer but operations you know they can't be left out you know there's you know, we we know from today you know common uses of energy management consumption you know your the nest things of that nature is being pulled over into, you know, enterprise businesses, monitoring temperatures in your cooler, having sensors available to report temperature fluctuations, you know, temperature in the cooler, temperature in the store, you know, these are all value adds of data that, you know, is being enabled through different areas of the IoT um, space. You can go back and look at historical usage of the data you know why is that why is my ac bill now jumping 
you know, what have sensors in place, you know, maybe somebody's leaving the door open, you know, these are it's all data being fed into the engine uh, or, of analytics, equipment management, repair costs. We all know it's like, we don't know when the AC is going to go out, but hey, when it does, it's going to cost extra because it's in the middle of summer and it's a last minute deal. You know, how can, you know, they're building sensors that you can put into the boards of equipment to monitor, you know, fluctuations. Maybe there's something getting ready to go out and there's uh, a resistor that's spiking, you know, having the ability to embed something within those devices to be able to report gives you the ability to have, you know, to preemptive, go out and say, hey, we're starting to see some fluctuations on certain things, you know, if it's a control board or whatever, and if it goes a piece of equipment, go out and maybe schedule a maintenance to get that part replaced ahead of time before waiting until it's the last minute, you know, because at the end of the day, it's a race to have somebody go out there. If it's your own staff or it's a third party that you have to contract out, it's a cost, you know. Frank, field tech, He's got other stuff to do, you know, scheduled for today and for him to drop everything to spend the next six hours replacing parts on a piece of gear at another site is costly to both to both sites if it's a multi-site. You know, inventory management, you know, you can keep on reading on and on. You know, the ideas of where this is going is incredible. You know, having sensors built into the shelves, you know, to understand, you know, if it's tracking devices, tracking weight on the shelves, RFID chips, track, you know, embedded, you know, they're getting cheaper and cheaper, you know, to report inventory instead of, you know, Susie over there counting every chip on the, in the bag, you know, on the, on the shelf and what's her expiration dates, you know, having this information embedded in the chip, you know, it's all reporting back, has the ability to all report back in-store inventory. Where is it? Where is the tra Where is my inventory? I know I have six cases of Diet Coke, but where are they? Well, you know, they're in the back and they're not on the shelf, you know, so you're losing money there, you know, but instead of walking around the store to look to see, you know, have alerts, have the ability, you know, to be able to take all this data, you know, it can be data overload. I know it, you know, how to look at data all the time and and it, it can be overloaded it can overload you if you don't have the right tool sets to create those alerts you know security video analytics you know that's getting more and more you know the days of just filming something and you know hey you know the computer walked off the desk don't know where it is when it happened because nobody saw it and you got to go back and look through countless hours of film or tape or whatever it may be you know newer technologies has the ability to pinpoint you know put a spot on on video you have a video feed of the computer on the desk go back and look at it all real time you know let the computer let all the analytics all this data has been fed mark out that spot and see when that computer moved off the desk you know or when somebody was walking up to an area Go back through and capture that, you know, heat sensing technology within the camera systems, you know, these are all abilities to better pinpoint, you know, activity within, within a location, you know, if it's inside or outside, you know, it's continually growing, you know, security feeds and data, you know, data analytics from the security feeds, it's just going to be able to cut down, you know, loss. So this little slide I, I found uh, I found online, you know, where does it all go? Where does it all come together? And I think this kind of a, gives you an idea of, you know, getting to know, you know, technology with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you know, your phone's on, you got Wi-Fi turned on, you got Bluetooth for your headset or your speakers, you know, all this data is being broadcasted out of your phone. You know, you're not connecting the Wi-Fi, but it knows. So you got Wi-Fi um, access points that are sensing, you know, presence. They're not connecting, but they know that you're there. 
you know, they know that people are coming around, you know, you're not, uh, you know, you're passing by, but not connecting, you know, but then you walk in, you know, you walk in the store in real time, you know, communication, you know, maybe you have the app, maybe you have your local store app on your phone, they know, you know, through Bluetooth, same thing, and Wi-Fi going, hey, you know, they know that you're there. Maybe they can push something out to you. You know, hey, welcome back. You know, I, you know, may not be selling you something, but you know, something for them to know. You know, some may look at it as big brother, but some of them, go, you know, a lot of people go, wow, they know that I'm here. Maybe, you know, I stand somewhere. You know, for a while. You know, I could send that merch. You know, I could send that customer a notification. I could send them some kind of um, marketing. I can upsell them something, you know, going back to a buy a fountain soda every morning, maybe two, two 20 ounce bottles for, you know, a buck, you know, well, that's the same price as my soda. And I got one for later versus watching it melt all day, you know, you know, as you get merchants to adopt into these programs and, you know, get them to understand, you know, get comfortable with your software on your phone. If it's, you know, or in the technology, you know, connect into the Wi-Fi, you know, as you engage them and they adopt it, you're, you're being able to upsell them. You're being able to give them better, more customer experience. You know, you have the data, you know, maybe it's a program that you opt into, you know, so now they know your demographics, you know, your, your age, 17 to 25 or whatever. and you know, you can start to understand buying habits, you know, through the use of the technology. You know, you're once blind to, you know, we we're all blind to what was going on. People just came in and bought stuff and left. Now you're starting to know who's buying what. Maybe it's a demographic. Maybe you have uh, a certain demographic that likes to buy some, some type of food or whatever product. Maybe you can change something in your store. You know, they opted in. You're starting to see that this group comes in and maybe we can change, you know, change some of their buying habits through grasping all that analytical data. And it's loyalty, you know. It's tracking their monitoring, you know, tracking their activity. You know, where are they moving in the store? Um, you know, I'll, I'll show it on the next slide, but, you know, the technology has... You know, I mentioned cameras being able to heat sync, but, you know, placing access points and Bluetooth beaconing and such um, without within the store and having small Bluetooth beacons at a specific uh, product, you know, you can all see what's going on. You know, you have the ability to go and, you know, if you start seeing a lot of people look at a certain end cap on a product going, wow, you know. What are they looking? You know, you know what they're looking at. You know, you see that it's a backup. You know, is it a backup because it's a bottleneck in the in the flow of the store, or is it a really good product? And hey, let's look at the product. Let's look at the back end reporting on: Are we selling a lot of Diet Coke, or is it Diet Pepsi? You know, what is it? And I'm by no means endorsing Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi here by any means. So. So the relevant data about every visitor, you know, I just talked about, you know, that's what I was talking about, heat sinking, you know, be able to see the flow, you know, your phones are broadcasting this information, you can actually see the flow within the store. You know, maybe you're wanting to push some new product. Maybe you know that on the main aisles where most people stand, you know, that's where the line to the checkout backs up. Maybe you can put, you know, you can go in there and see where and detect where the flow is, be able to push more product, you know, the newer products down there on that aisle to see, you know, maybe they're going to sell, you know, if we put it up there, is it, you know, or is it just a bad product that we don't, you know, we need to quit selling, you know, connecting. If it's through connecting to the Wi-Fi, you know, um, at a location or an app, these are all things that you're engaging. You can optimize your brand, you know, optimize your visibility and your messaging down to, 
you know, the merchant. You know, now they know, hey, I'm on this Wi-Fi. You get the little disclaimer, okay, you know. Hey, I got I got customer value here. I got guest Wi-Fi if the establishment supports it. And then if you have an app or a check-in or whatever, you know, that's branding. That's marketing. You know, this example is, you know, send them off to Facebook. They connected, you know, do you opt in to check-in and such, you know, or if it's Google or any of the other ones that out there that redirect to a website going, hey, tell us about your experience. Tell us about your messaging. You know, that can go, that goes the same with your app. You've actually, you've gotten your, you got your customer that's adopted the app, you know, got comfortable with it, you know. Now you're tracking data on them and engaging them, you know, through the app. And then where does it go? You know, you, you know, here's one of the thousands, and every year it's going to grow even larger. Analytical interfaces, you know, talking about, you know, it depends on what you want. You know, the marketing team is creating a program. You know, and I spend a lot on, you know, I mentioned a lot about marketing and all of that because, you know, they drive, they have the ability to kind of control our habits. Um, and our buying experience utilizing as we all adopt and then the millennials and you know kids they just keep on downloading apps for everything you know but you have the ability to find tools to harness that data you know providers that focus on if it's just capturing basic demographical information and then collecting emails you know you know looking at programs that have sensors that tie into the apps, you know, to bring it all together. You know, you know, the biggest challenges is, hey, I got this program over here, I got that program over there. You know, now you have so many programs, and now the marketing team has to manage. Well, I like this one and that one, and well, now it all becomes just a big headache and for everybody. Merchant, the customer is getting a good experience, but you can't really do with much with it because you got so many variables everywhere. You know, so being able to find the right tools to capture the relevant data from the activity, you know, from all these different devices is very important. Then we'll throw out, you know, infrastructure, the IT side of things. You know, the marketing team always has great ideas, you know. Want to do all this just like every every Monday we have grand ideas of what we're going to get done for the week and then you all get sidetracked you know marketing team has all grand ideas and then it you know how does it all come together and a lot of this stuff not all a lot of it all goes back into the infrastructure we went from basic locations to having a you know the point of sale on the counter in a back office machine maybe throw a DVR in there um you know lotteries always stayed on its side to wow hey now we want to now we want to add this you know operations team wants to add these controllers they got to connect into the network you know want to add some sensors you know can we enable that that wireless access point bluetooth feature to connect to you know send data down to the phones and okay well well now the IT people are involved because, well, you can't just throw all this stuff out there on the network and, you know, still be PCI compliant on, you know, historically one big flat land to, now we got a lot of bits and pieces. We got all these endpoints that need to get out somehow. Some of it's a Bluetooth beacon that, you know, doesn't actually connect to the infrastructure to, now we got these great cameras, you know, that's feeding data to, um, your HVAC has these Ethernet, you know, these controllers that connect into the network. You know, how does this all tie into the infrastructure? What is that going to do? You know, we can't just go and up and drop all this stuff in and then still be compliant. You know, do we have to upgrade the network out of the site, more switches, different routers to segment it? Oh, guest Wi Fi, how are we going to do that? How are we going to tie all that in? Then we got to get it all out to the internet, you know edge you know is that your firewall is your firewall equipped to support all this you know 
it may be doing the job for protecting your point of sale today and maybe segmenting the back office, but now you got all these other people going, well, I got a third party that needs to get in and check that, you know, temperature sensors. Well, they got to get into the network somehow, get into the network. A lot of us remember the port forwarding, you know, open up this rule. I need to hit my IP address on this port. Now you got the devices embedded with operating systems. Now they're just remote controlling into it. Well, when you remote control into it, you're essentially in a lot, you know, on the local network. Well, if your temperature mon your temperature sensor sensing system is sitting on the same network as your back office machine, well, if they get into the temp sensor machine device, well, can they get over to your back office? Well, then can they get over to your point of sale? You know, it's all round robining through the network if they're not all isolated. Maybe you go, Jeff, okay, well, I'll put them in a different environment. Well, you want your two third-party vendors and then you get in for the temp sensor and maybe your tank monitoring, getting in the, you know, they're not affecting your back office, but do you want them to be able to communicate and see each other? Maybe, maybe not. But you got all this data. We got all these devices. They finally make it out to the internet. Then where are they going? They're going to cloud devices. They're going to, you know, you may have a system, you may have gotten a product that that data is being fed back into you. A lot of cases, everything going to a service, it's being hosted on some Amazon cloud or, you know, or something like that, all up in the internet, you know. Got to, got to pay attention to those. They have a lot of data. It may be just tracking your, you know, how old they are and, you know, male or female, or it could be collecting more data. You know, where's all this data being stored? Who has access to it? You know, now you got, I have my app. I got my C store app. I put in my information. Okay. It's there. You know, now I got my marketing team act team accessing the data. Everything's communicating back and forth. There's a lot of bits and pieces going into Hey, I just, man, this is really cool about automating watching my temperature of my cooler <laughs> out at the location. So, hey, we really need to think about the overall security of the infrastructure. You know, endpoints, protect the data at rest and in transit. Data at rest means, you know, you may have a system that's over there, just, you know, a device that may be, you know, and I'm not saying temperature all everybody, you know, temperature sensors, I'll pick on them because it's very, you know, you know, known. Are they collecting data and then storing it locally and then passing on kind of the batch process versus real time processing, you know, are they batching it up in there? You know, maybe it's some other systems, you know. Is the data protected when it's sitting there? Somebody hacked into it. You know, we IoT, you read it every day. There's a million different websites you can go to <laughs> to read about, you know, all these IoTs. It's growing so fast. We saw the numbers earlier. It's growing so fast that, you know, there's a lot of things getting overlooked from a security perspective. You know, on are they being managed properly? Are they being patched? Is there policy put on some that restrict access to only certain access? You know, these are all things that, you know, as a business owner and you're trying to deploy, things to consider. It's just like adding a PC to the network, you know. Who has access to it? What policies, you know, making sure that they're within the infrastructure properly. Are they segmented? I got some merchants that have, you know, 15 VLANs because they put every third party, if it's the ATM, if it's the DVR, um, and so on, onto their own segments. Going back to the earlier point, just so one another can't see each other. Just so if one device gets potentially compromised, it doesn't potentially compromise everybody else. You know, we keep on, you know, and knowing, you know, knowing where they need to go. 
restrict the access. We do it through PCI today. We do it on our payment segments. You know, you're only supposed to go to known places and everything else gets denied unless there's business justifications. With the growth of IoT and devices connecting onto the network, really should consider the same logic. You know, monitor the network traffic. You know, hey, you know, okay, Jeff, I've segmented, I've restricted. But man, this application just blows, you know, I have a one and a half meg down internet connection at seven six um seven hundred meg or seven hundred K up. Wow, it just killing my internet, you know. Visibility in the network. Where are they going? Okay, well you you know they're going to this web server, but man, that application sure streams a lot of data. I still gotta run a business behind here, you know, the take credit card transactions, be able to process that because all this other stuff is pretty irrelevant if, you know, if it's congesting, you know, it's bogging down my network. You know, of course, we've got the device, we've segmented, we've done all that, and we're running firewall with ID, uh, IDS, IPS on it. Data's going somewhere. Is it going to a cloud provider? Is it going to your or is it going down to a local server? You know, what are the security policies? You know, you investigate, you know, who you're gonna do processing with and make sure and, you know, as soon as you add payments, are they PCI compliant and they fall in, you know, these rules and that rule. It's no different than looking at, this is all sensitive data. You know, you don't wanna be the next one that partnered up with somebody that had a potential breach. You know, what are their policies? What are they doing? What what compliancy programs do they follow? How are you authenticated with them? You know, is it just hey, I got, we all share the same username, password? You know, or is it multi-authentication? Not all times you need that level, but you need to understand that's your data. You know, I read a few articles when preparing for this. You know, data rights. You know. Whose right is the data? You know, is it is that your data or is it kind of a shared data? You know, they they could potentially use your data. You know, you've got all these merchants signed up for a program or you know tracking of you know the temperature on this cooler and it's this hardware. You know, can they use that data to sell it? You know, whose is it? You know, these are again, it's a growing market segment. You you know, but these are just high level, you know, in in user applications. You know, this could be your operations team having an app on the phone to the customer having an app on the phone, you know. What security is it, you know? You know, is it relevant data that you want to step up the security, you know? Every day somebody's getting breached, you know. And what is relevant data, you know? I think every company is going to look at it different. You know, is this sensitive data that, you know, that need to have, you know, a longer password or can you have it basic, email, whatever, you know, but, you know, as it's on the nightly news every day, you know, somebody being breached, you know, you're getting more visit, you know, the populations get more visibility into security, what you should and shouldn't be doing because every time there's a breach somebody goes well you know the passwords were only set up to do alphanumeric and only up to eight characters and no special characters and well that limits and everybody's going to use some variation of the same you know you know you, depending on what you have on your phone or an app and the data you have access to maybe that's something else to consider you know should you change the policy that you know they have to put in a more complex or get an email authentication saying validating that the password was changed because people are starting to ask and you know and there's nothing wrong with i think the adoption everybody's starting to get a little more comfortable with doing a little more complex password and authentication depending on what you're trying to get into So close out IoT, you know, 
some questions. What are we trying to accomplish? Who needs to be involved? What are the risks of it? You know, if it's a loyalty program to, you know, temperature monitoring and shelf sensors and Bluetooth beaconing, you know, what are the risks of doing all this? When does it need to be completed? You know, coming from an IT background, you know, it's always somebody comes in and I need it yesterday. But that's not just an IT, that's in, well, that's in your home life too, you know. You know, evaluate multiple vendors. You know, Max is next week. You know, there's going to be a lot of vendors out there. There's, you know, there's a great space. You know, you're going to hear a lot of, a lot of stuff going on there. I imagine that talk about uh, the Coke dispensers that's reporting all this stuff, you know, and uh, marketing applications. You know, there's a wealth that evaluate. Look at like any other deployment of anything else. You know, evaluate. Involve other departments early on, you know. They go out there and spend the next two months looking at a product going, hey, we, the marketing team, we love it. This is what we want. And then the IT team's going, yeah, we didn't know anything about it. We just, we just truck rolled 50 stores and upgraded them, you know, a month ago. And now this is going to put an impact on that. You know, if it's an outsource, they got to pay a third party to make changes to their network or go over there and update the infrastructure out of the site. What is the impact? Define the scope of the project and develop an implementation plan. You know, these are all things that, you know, talk about, but, you know, it's always been in silos and it's, you know, IoT is taking an impact on a broad scale within the business. You know, from finance, wanting to know the numbers, how much is going to cost to the operations and, you know, to the marketing team. So develop a complete plan, set clear guidelines, and, you know, go from there. And the next slide, a few resource slides, you know, um, as Cara mentioned, you know, this will be recorded, you know, there's 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 a lot of information out there, um, you know, talking about where the market's going, you know, what to look at security-wise, you know, like, yeah, Tons of it, you know, it's a new wild, wild west. And, uh, you know, I think they're trying to get um, um, some conformity in it, you know, and build safeguards into the whole infra uh, the infrastructure of IoT to try to give, you know, not tell people what to do, but kind of give them guidelines and things that, you know, to consider when building, you know, if you're a hardware manufacturer building from ground up, you got the box and then you got the software people that write the code on it to the app and the hosting, you know, providing guidance and direction. Gardner has tons of reports on where IoT is going, depending on the market segment, how you want to look at it. Um, but, you know, Gardner's always one out there with a wealth of knowledge. And from there, we'll go to BYOD. Bring your own device. You know, it's been around for a long time. We all know it. It's getting more and more adoptive, you know. You know, reports showing that, you know, improved productivity, you know, you know, with your employees. You know, hey, you're a Mac person, you know, you're you're, you know, you're an iPhone or I'm, you know, I'm an Android person and I'm a Windows PC person, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, how do we adopt it? It used to be the days going, we all carry it around, you know, maybe you travel a lot like me, you have your personal laptop, you get your work laptop and you know, days when you had two phones and really go back and get the old pager and, you know, quarters at the pay phone. But, um, you know, now it's, Got to adopt it. It's there, you know. But adopting it brings risks, you know. If you don't put it, you know, it all goes back to strategizing and looking at what are we trying to do. If you don't do it right, you know, it's like, okay, well, we're just going to enable them to get the web email and such, you know. You know, at the end of the day, if you're just allowing them to log into mail through the phone and don't have any control, well, the employees are own administrator. You know, 
if it's a phone, you know, it's a laptop and they get to web mail, you know, it may not be, you know, my kids are older now. They have their own phones, but in the earlier days, I, I used to grab my phone and, you know, it's like here, you know, play your game. I'm talking, you know, or, you know, shared devices, you know, home PCs, you know, it's like, Hey, we're connected. Hey, they gave me VPN. But, hey, Okay, well, I'm the employee. I read the employee handbook, and I'm doing things that I want. But and my wife, my kids come in here and use my PC. Well, you know, maybe they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Got endpoint protection, antivirus, all that firewall set up. You know, maintaining updates. You know, updates the way they go. My PC got rebooted by Windows this morning, and. I didn't like that, but, you know, got updates going, you know, network attacks via unsecured Wi-Fi, you know. It's like, okay, well, you enabled your employee to use their laptop, and they're over there going, hey, I'm at Taco Shack, and they got Wi-Fi. Sweet. You know, it's free. I don't have to pay for it. I'm going to send their Taco Shack. Well, it's been unsecured Wi-Fi, and well, you don't have endpoint protection, and, you know, it wasn't fully administrated ministered properly you know yeah that's comp that could be compromising you know, application how many times you download an app and it's like hey i want to ask you know hey can i access your photos can i access this you know cloud storage you know hey everything you know got everything in microsoft 365 and you know google docs and all that cloud you know it's like hey i got employees need access to that well what are you doing to keep employees from downloading data or potentially malware virus or whatever? They're connected and they got malware and now all that data's been sucked off or such. And at the end of the day, what if it gets stolen? Then they have strong passwords, device gets stolen, now somebody has access, you know, you know Friday night. You don't know, maybe, oh, I think my phone's in the car. Well, somebody actually stole it off the coffee table or the table at the coffee shop. And, well, now it's been four hours. Somebody's got your phone. They've done all kinds of stuff and downloaded data and deleted just because they just want to be malicious. So, you know, plenty of risks like anything else, you know, but there are programs, you know. Start off with mode MDM, mobile device management. It's uh, locking down the device, and now it's gone. Now I, I went through this last year, looking at all this, and now it's the EMM. You know, this is you know, and UEM. You know, enterprise mobility. You know, application management, content management. You know, you know, all tied into going. We want to enable our employees to. You know, the millennials, they they have their environments and, you know, there's a lot of value add, you know, you know, cost savings and such and, you know, adopting it. It can be done. Lots of people do it. You know, these are these names up here, right? In, um, you know, AirWatch and Zen Mobile and BlackBerry, you know, Mobile Iron and um, IBM, you know, these are and there's those are the ones that Gardner kind of put up in the right quadrant there, but there's lots of other ones, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. You know, you may, you may be just doing email. That's all we're going to give the employee on their device is email, nothing more. But hey, we, you know, maybe you can you take parts and pieces of a, of a product and just say, hey, this is all I want, device security, and I want to be able to, you know, remote wipe them when necessary you know, these are all things to consider when trying to adopt these programs and planning eligibility who's going to take part in this program who who are you going to give you know be aware of who you're going to allow access to this you know is it the entire company everybody's going to have email access or is it you know, only relevant people, you know, if it's operations and support, you know, what devices, you know, you know as you look at having a mobile management device um, program, 
you gotta think about what devices are we gonna you know iPhones, Androids, Macs, you know, Windows PC, Chrome. Chrome is real big. What operate what level of operating system do they need to be at a minimum of Windows ten or seven? You know. Um you know, same with the iOS. You know, well, you know what, you get cut off, you know, here's a major patch in the iOS. You know, you gotta have that or, you know, you get cut off if you're running it for so long. You know. Where are you letting them go? Are you letting them just get the email or are you letting them get to, you know, Office 365, OneDrive and, you know, Google Docs and maybe we got this other Salesforce app and some other kind of operations ticketing system, you know, where are they all trying to get? Because it all impacts on, you know, the security of the overall and the data of your company. Employee communication, you know. Heard a million times, and imagine there's some on the phone that's experienced it. You know, okay, I had to download this little mobile management app on my phone, you know, to get the email. I get it, but now it's I can't do this. You know, I can't do certain things. I can't. You know, you've locked me out of half the things on my own personal PC. But you know, which is fine. I understand all the value in that, security-wise, but Maybe as an employee, if I knew that you're going to administer, you know, lock me out of all administrative access to my device, my Windows PC that is mine and I use for non-work stuff, maybe I would have, you know, thought about it differently. Maybe I would have said, hey, you know what? I love my little thin Windows Surface here, but I'll take whatever you're going to give me if, you know, if that's what it takes for me to be able to still run my Windows surface the way I like to run it, you know, cost, planning, you know, that's a given, you know, if it's setup cost, implementation cost, licensing cost, you know, do you have to buy that service renewal contract every year? Is things going to get shut off if you don't pay it by the first, you know, or and whatever? Security and compliance, you know, how is this enabling all this stuff for your employees? you know, going to impact the security and compliance of the overall company. How does this fall in line with our corporate company policies? You know, allowing access and restrictions. Are we, is the products that we choose to control and applications we choose to allow impacting all that? Make sure that whatever program you decide on follows those guidelines. Stay in line with your company and, you know, if it's PCI or HIPAA or whatever other, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley, all those other ones, you know, is that in line with those as well, you know, and support maintenance. Who's going to support this? You know, is there going to be additional staff that you're going to have to hire and train and send to Colorado for the weekend, you know, in the middle of summer when it's hot in Texas would be a great place to go? You know, or is it outsourced? You know, those, you know, factor in cost, the ongoing support. You know, you're going to have, you know, when Jeff messes up his phone, he's going to have to call somebody. You know, is it going to be your own staff that you, you know, or is it outsourced? So just a few things. BYOD has all been about bring your own device for your employees, kind of been really focused around. But now you're enabling your vendors access to pertinent some pertinent data, your contractors that are coming in. You've got a guy that's come in for, you know, a three month span to do some software development. You know, where does he need access to mobile payment devices? You know, yeah, you know, some attach ons, not as much you see in the um petroleum space, but you know. IoT devices, inventory devices. These are all devices that, you know, goes back to if you're providing them or you enable them and they're connecting to your network, you know, how how are you how are they being protected? What restrictions do you have applied on them? Because in, you know, a lot of cases IoT is about going to big data, cloud analytics type stuff, but you know, now we've got other people that are needing to connect into components of your network. 
depending on what it is, you need to have some policies, some some way of controlling and restricting that, you know, they can't copy. You know, they can't copy an email and paste it somewhere else on the phone and such. You know, they're, it's crazy where I say it's big brother, but, you know, you know, but it's a way to protect the business at all costs, you know, more data, you know, another breach. You don't want your email being the one that's floating around out there. And kind of wrap up BYOD. I know we're getting close on time here, you know. Just think about, you know, questions. What are we what devices, what are they needing access to? Who are the vendors out there? You know, as I mentioned earlier, you got that big circle of device management and enterprise and content and such. You know, what are the pieces that we're wanting to try to accomplish here? You know, where do they need access? Maybe we just need these components. And how easy is it going to be to deployed? You know, you're going to have some custom one-off program. That's great because you're saving, you know, you're getting, on, you know, 10 cents on the dollar going, hey, they do this. But man, how easy is it to deploy? You know, they got to have every employee that needs it come into the office and set it up. Well, that doesn't work when you got a remote mobile staff, you know, that you may see at NAX next week and, that is not the best time that you want to have all your salespeople handing over phones to install something new because they're over there trying to do business, you know, quick deployments. And then plan, again, goes back to what are, what are we trying to accomplish and how do we plan to get it accomplished? Evaluating, defining scope, evaluating all the costs and coming up with an implementation plan. You know, these are just all part of the cycle. You know, a lot of this falls more in the IT, you know, team of having to be responsible for, but, you know, it impacts, you know, last thing you want to do is IT team come up with an idea and cut your CEO off from emails after 9 o'clock to 8 a.m. Some may like that, some may not, but, you know, everybody's on answer on that one. So with that, questions, answers, Cara, I don't know if anybody came in on the hotline here. Uh, please enter your or ask your questions in the webinar question panel and we'll be happy to read them and answer them as well. And so Jeff, thank you again for, for all that great information. So one would take that you might be a Diet Coke addict and um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm sure they, yeah. Yep. So uh, we're just using you though, but um, so I know that while while we're waiting for folks to to type in their questions here, you know, do you have some some general thoughts on on just some some basic implementations? Is would you recommend folks to to start small rather than just go gung ho, or or is the best thing to do? I mean, what what would your recommendation be um, for starting out? Or like bringing your own device, adding, you know, allowing folks. You'd mentioned just doing email. Is that a great place to start? Where do you grow? I mean, any recommendations from what you've seen and what you've had to help people implement? Well, I think it all comes around to, you know, different levels of, you know, it, it all comes into departments. Seeing a lot of it is, you know, the sales guys need access to email only, but you have the operations guy that's. 24 seven and he needs to be able to VPN into the, into the office and get the email and he needs to be able to get into some back office network system. So, you know, it's really not one, one solution fits all. It really comes sure. down to, you know, Hey, you're only going to get access to the corporate infrastructure if you're from home or, sure. you know, from your home IP address. So, you know, it's, it's really going back to, where are we trying to get to? What are we trying to accomplish for here? We need to protect the network and we, people need access. Where do they need to go and how relevant do they need it all the time? Because cost may right. outdrive going convenience in some cases. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And I, I certainly liked your example as well about, about implementation regarding the fact that, you know, you may have one vendor that can help you get there that's a little bit less expensive 
but as you do your RFP, you need to make sure that you understand the full scope of, of their implementation and, and how you're going to do that. The example that you gave is like sending your salespeople to NACs and turning over devices. So I thought that that was, that was a great example there as well. And, um, you know, you had mentioned earlier also on the Internet of Things, maxing out your bandwidth with all the different IoT things. Do you have any any words of advice for for how to avoid that from happening? Like you said, to you don't you certainly don't want to stymie your 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 payment applications from being transmitted. So or your payment your payment cards from being transmitted. So is there a, a general rule of thumb? I mean, it sounds like you can max that out. Do you have some other advice relative to like minimum amounts of bandwidth, um, limiting the I, I mean, yeah. Well, you know, as you go with any vendor, if it, you know, with any other project, you know, it's evaluating vendors. You're going to start off with 50 of them and you're going to get it down to a subset, you know, coming from the managed network side of it, you know, half the time, you know, I, I'm, I'm there to lock down networks. I'm there to restrict networks. And, you know, you, my merchant has signed on with the program and they're telling me they're using Bobby's temp monitoring service and like, okay, well, you know, what are the requirements? Where do they need access to? And we get a hold of Bobby's temp company and he's like, well, we, we need access to the internet. What is it? So it's really your provider, you know, it's don't sign on and sign a contract to move forward with it, you know, beta pilot, test it, you know, get real time usage, you know, if it's drop it into one site, you know, and then monitor it. If they can't provide you guidance on where do they need access and what kind of bandwidth they're going to need and how often they're going to need, you know, you need a beta pilot at a location in real time. You know, we all drop stuff in the lab and somebody runs a couple transactions going, hey, it's all good. And then it goes out the site. It's like, oh, yeah, well, Susie does this report in the middle of the night. Well, they didn't test that when we were testing over the network. So, you know, get it in real time you know, as close or as close to real time, you know, communication as possible. So you can benchmark this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Good points. And, you know, some of the things that we haven't talked about even today is outdoor EMV implementation for the convenience stores. And that is probably going to, you know, we've got folks upgrading communications between the dispensers and the point of sale. And you've got folks adding video monitoring things like that. So there's other considerations I think that people have to to keep in mind before you go gung ho on all of these other other cool things that are coming about and and trying to anticipate also what's coming down the pike with outdoor EMV because I think that is some that could also be uh, a resource of some of that internet connectivity especially cuz the EMV data is going to be larger as well. We have um, we had one question, other question that came in, and what if a third party brings their own device, like a like a like a maintenance person, and they need to access the network? What precautions can you take? Good question. There's a lot of angles that you can take on that. Um, it's it, it's pretty common, you know. You have, you know, if we're talking about um, you know, if you know that, you know, your third party, you know, a lot of them do have, you know, especially maintenance, have cellular built in, you know, cellular, but they may need access in the network. You know, it may be, you know, with more of adoption of Wi-Fi out at, you know, in the petroleum space from handhelds and, you know, for inventory management and such. And, you know, and then some of the new IoT devices they need to get on the network, maybe adopt a, you know, build out a network that, you know, has Wi-Fi, you know, that it's for guests or have a random password that, you know, that you can give, you know, that's isolated from your store network and all these third parties that, you know, maybe it's a third party Wi-Fi SSID that, you know, mm -hmm. Susie in the back office can give and it's, you know, she got the email on Monday of the, the password of the week for, you know, the vendor Wi-Fi, you know, that you can give out so they're not knowing the same password every time you know that's that's one way of doing it you know it's uh, the last thing you want to do you know it's 
they don't have Wi-Fi and they need they need to get on the internet and they don't have Wi-Fi, you know, they're they're going to do two things. They're going to plug into your network directly, or they're going to go, hey, I'm going to plug this internet connection, plug right into the broadband modem, and now it's got your store. So, you know, if you know you have vendor sets that need access, you know, maybe come up with a program to allow that. We do have some merchants today that kind of have taken that approach that they need the field tech that comes in and services the point of sale access so he can push stuff down to the device from the cloud. Yeah, I like your idea of the password of the week. That's that's very clever. So, well, Jeff, I think that wraps it up for today. And thank you so much for sharing all this great information. And again, please answer the survey questions following this webinar so you can get a copy of the deck. And visit us at NAX if you're going to be there next week. And then look for the webinar coming in November. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you.